So today uh, we are going to talk about the 3DCS viewer, top of the pyramid. Um, if you've been following us, you know that uh, we are going down the road of a scalable solution with, you know, you can see the bottom of the pyramid. That is, you know, our flagship product, which has all the capabilities, uh, iteration moves, uh, all kinds of measurements, um, user DLLs. Basically, you can model anything you want inside our variation analysis. But then, you know, to try to specialize, if you, you know, if you're mainly dealing with mechanical joints, we now have a, uh, another package called MBM, which Ben mentioned is going to have a webinar on it coming up in March, and DVM, which we had a, um, a webinar on that. And so you can see, you know, DVM is for entry level. The idea is people that are getting into dimensional management, you know, they could start out with DVM so that they're you know, not overwhelmed with the mass capability of our main package and then migrate, you know, down to MVM or VA, you know, or you could have a couple of VA specialists and, uh, and multiple people using DVM. Um, because anything that's done in DVM can be opened and enhanced with MVM. Anything in MVM can be opened and enhanced with VA. And then the top of the cube is the viewer. This is a um, new product that allows anybody to navigate through a pre-existing model. The idea, the idea here is, you know, typical organizations, they have you know, analyst groups that are doing the tolerance analysis, but the tolerance analysis or dimensional management, you know, they're the link between all the different divisions in the company, manufacturing, styling, stamping, you, know, you name it, dimensional management affects all of them. And so the idea is with the viewer is we want to let more people see what was done in the 3DCS tolerance analysis model. And then of course, um, the viewer is in all of our platforms, multi-CAD, IKEA, V5, V6, NX, Creo, SolidWorks. <clears throat> so um, anyone using our product in any of the platforms can utilize the viewer. So what are the benefits of the viewer? <clears throat> The idea is to get people outside of the dimensional management department or group to start getting involved with tolerance analysis. We want to improve the collaboration between the modeling team and all the other stakeholders in the um, company. I learned this new word called democratization, and that is to make accessible to everyone what we or you are doing in the dimensional um, simulation group and allow everybody else to you know kind of see how is the model built how is it deviating what tolerances did you use where are you measuring it and so the viewer is a, a way to proliferate dimensional management along uh, outside to the uh, rest of the community so inside the viewer it allows you to open any 3DCS model, including compliant model or mechanical model or, or any of our add-on add-ons um, like AAO. Of course, you know, you have to have those licenses to open up a compliant modeler in the viewer. And it allows you to animate, deviate, and view all the contents in the model. You won't be able to change any of the contents because of course, you know, we don't want anybody mucking up a finished model, but you can review the measurements, the moves, the tolerances, and you can load previously produced results and deviate that model to its min, max. Actually, you can just deviate it, you can sweep it, and you can use the visualize effect to study how any one tolerance is affecting a critical measurement. And then optionally, if you have the AAO license, then you can also change tolerances in the model 
and see instant effects on all the other measurements. So if you see down at the bottom here, it's got a list of the icons. You know, all of your all of your graphic animation icons are available: build, separate, animate, deviate, turn points on and off. Um, so basically, you have everything available to you except creating moves, creating tolerances, creating measures, or editing them, other than editing the tolerance of value within AAO. Next slide. So taking it one step further, um, because we are integrated in all the CAD packages, and the CAD packages also usually interface with a database system, Team Center, Windchill, Anovia, SolidWorks Enterprise, PDM. The idea is anybody that has access to the PLM system will be able to open up any model with the DCS viewer and look at any results as far as PowerPoint docs, HTML reports, anything that is stored in the PLM system, of course, that's related to the 3DCS model, can be opened up from the viewer. So Priya, she is going to be demonstrating the viewer in NX today. And so we are going to be integrating with Team Center. And this just kind of goes to show you that um, 3DCS only stores the data in the top level of your assembly in the Team Center. We pull parts from Team Center so that you can see your full model, but we don't store any data on the parts. So let's, yeah, to start with, I'll be doing this demo in NX platform. Uh, I'm using NX version 11 for this. And also I'll be running this demo in a Team Center background, uh, the Team Center version to be uh, version 12. So that's the background about the versions that I'm using in this demo. Um, so to start with, I have this five button mouse model that was completely modeled and saved in a variation analyst package. So that model was saved in that, and now I'm just opening the model to view and study about that in the viewer configuration. To start with, uh, you can see the MX uh, workbench have the 3DCS viewer toolbar. Just by clicking on it, I have the update model button active. So doing that will bring up, bring up the 3DCS model navigator along with the other, by activating the other functions. So the Priya, thing, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't, you, you might've went fast, but I don't know if you noticed she opened that model from Team Center. That's why, right. you know, that's why she showed you that, hey, I have Team Center over here. She opened the model from Team Center. Now she's in NX and uh, continue on, sorry Priya. Yeah, to show that, I can also show you the model in Team Center Save. So now I have, this is the most web demo model that's from Team Center I'm launching in NX. So thanks, Gary. Yeah, I, I should have mentioned that, but yeah. So from there, um, so right after I launched viewer configuration, the first thing you can notice is the very minimum number of uh, functionalities I have in, my, in the workbench when compared to the other configurations we have. And also I got the model navigator tree up. So this model navigator will, will have all the model information that this model was, um, how the model was saved and worked in the previous um, uh, configurations. So now uh, to start with, if it, right after I got this model, anyone have, want to know what, what has been measured in this model? So the first thing, if I go through the list, if I come to the bottom, I have the measure list here. So just by clicking, any user can understand what are the measurements that that has been written in this model. So just by clicking on each measure from the tree, you can see how it gets highlighted in the graphics from the from and to feature. So that's the one way of knowing what are the measuring points or what are the parts that's been measured for this model. To get to know more, just by clicking on each MTM, this opens the measure dialog. So from here, I can uh, see what are the spec limits that's been applied, what specifically what features used, and also, in addition, I can I get to know the direction type or what the what the project or what's the vector used, and all additional information about that measurement. You probably were going to say, say it anyway, but notice how in this dialog box there's no OK or apply because 
you can go into the dialog boxes, but you can't make any changes. Changes to it. Yep. So that's right. So now let me close this and just get to the next uh, section of this model is the moves. So to know the moves, um, one thing as I as we did for the measure, you can simply click and get to know what are the paths that's being used in this move. Also, if you come up, you have this graphic analysis toolbar. So this graphic analysis toolbar is the whole set that we have in other packages as well. So first, just by clicking nominal build, that will quickly assemble the model by applying all the moves in this model and just show how the model looks in its assembled position. Or you can step through each move at a time by doing the animation. So from the animation, if I click this button here, it just moves the model one step at a time and, and look and give us a clear uh, visual, uh, visual way of knowing what part is moving for which move. So that's about the animation. Again, you can also double click on each move to get to know more information about the dialogue. And you can look for other, uh, what are the features being used, what part has been moved for this move, and all that. Similarly, there's no OK or Apply button here, so you can simply review the model and close. So then comes the deviation. So to deviation will show how the paths will for the applied tolerances or GDNT in the model. And if I click Deviate, you can see how the model gets deviated for by applying all the tolerances in this model. Here, I can delay this process or delay the speed. So this actually slow down my deviation so I can see how the model deviates slowly and more clearly. Speaking of the deviation, that's actually applying all the tolerances in the model. So to get to know about what, what uh, what's the tolerance or what's the GDNT the model is using, so I can get into the GDNT dialog or GDNT folder of any of the part here. So say for example, if I just click on this position, just double click open. So this will tell me what are the features used for this specific GDNT and what's the range that's been applied. So from here, as I showed the deviation process before, it just goes through the uh, deviation for all the tolerance that's applied in the model. So now, for example, if I want to know in this specific GDNT, this position tolerance, if I had to change the position value, say for example, now, Zero. if I change this to 10, I'm just exaggerating so I can visually see more variation. So right after doing that, you can see how the deviation is really big when compared to the previous uh, deviation we had. So this is just a quick visual way of checking uh, how a small change in a one single way GDNT can change the whole model deviation or the whole model build variation. And also, as, you, as I asked Gary mentioned before, you can do changes like that to visually look for what the model is doing, but you cannot save those changes in the model. So we ask, <laughs> right after doing that, you can simply close this so your changes get back to your default. So now we can get, get back to the nominal build. So that's my uh, original model build. So that's the deviation. And now uh, under deviate, you have the other option where you can sweep, deviate to offset, and deviation control. Uh, to get to know what sweep does, so let me separate the model. So by deviation, we saw how the whole model uh, tolerance is applied and how we visually saw the whole deviation. We can also, similarly, we can see the deviation on just a single part. To do that, I'll turn on the mesh. And if you pay attention to the top cover part here, let me zoom in a little bit. And now if I do a sweep, you can see how the mesh gets growing. This is like the mesh is trying to build a new in a new position by retaining its old position. So that's how it creates a pattern. So visually we can understand how the part, uh, what are the features that vary on, on this specific part for the applied GDNT. 
So from that sweep, so that's how we can study about the part deviation and also how about the whole model variation in this model. So that's the graphic analysis that give, gave you a complete understanding of how the mod, where the measurements have been created, how the model has been built, what the modes has been used, and also how, up, how the parts have been toleranced and all those information. So basically having a tree is you, you get all the information from the model that was previously saved. So just this interaction will get to know uh, at just a single button click to see where the features and what, what are the features that's used in this specific MTM or the specific move tolerance or measure. Then to move forward, then we have the statistical analysis where if you have the model information about the results that's saved along with the model, you can simply open that in this viewer and go through the results. To do that, I'll step back to the team center because I take this opportunity to show you how this information can be uh, put into team center and retrieved back. To do that, team center supports something called data set. That's, uh, that's how you, any file for information that a user need to put into team center along with the model they can use this data set to do it. Um, for, for our case here, the results files or the simulation files that we save along with the model are in HST and HLM format. As we don't have a direct file type that is supported inside Team Center to support these types, we can simply zip this into a single folder and attach that along with the model. So to do that, if I come back to uh, Team Center here, click File, New, data set so this is this will open a dialog with all the different types of uh, file types that this data set supports so if you scroll if i scroll through this you can see these are the different multiple type of uh, files that data set is supporting so now from here as i already have uh, analysis file zipped i just zipped that file and attached it into a data set along with the model Along with that, I also, just for this example, I had some reports, model report that was saved when I last saved this model in Variation Analyst. So I saved all those files also along with it. So now if I come back to the model location, so this is my model location. To, to be even more clearer, I just created a reports folder. And inside the report folder, I added all this information that I wanted, the, I wanted to go along with the model. So like as Gary mentioned earlier, if a, person, if, a, if a user from India who completed this task and added this information in this folder and put it into Team Center, so anywhere, any, any user anywhere around the world who have access to this model will have access to all this information. To retrieve this, so I get into the folder where I get to uh, get this analysis results file, I just right click, I go to named reference, just going to click and download. So this will download it to my local directory. So now I have this information retrieved from Team Center into my local machine. So once I did that, now I can come back into NX. So from here, I have this new analysis window, which helped me to load those information. So from here, if I go to file, I have load HST and load HLM options. So just by clicking that, I get to the folder where I have downloaded this. I click open. So that brings my HLM results. Sorry, HST. Then I have the HLM results downloaded. So yeah, I get that and open that in this dialog. So once that's up, now this is my analysis summary window, which have my Monte Carlo analysis, geofactor analysis, and also the contributor. So one uh, one window with all information in it. So once I have that, can pull the model to just to see. So just by clicking on each measure from here, you can see how it gets highlighted in the graphics again, like what we did from uh, for the measures from the tree. So this again shows what were the measurements and where it's been measured. Similarly, just by clicking on each measure, you can see how the contributor list down changes. So that's again the contributor list displaying for each measurement. So now I come here for the first measure left click gap. I have four set of contributor contributors. And now by just clicking on each contributor again, I can just I can see where are those contributors in the graphics. 
So that gives me a visual understanding. Okay, for left click, I have the four list of contributors and the hedge and the whole pin float is being the top contributor. And also I can see the geo factor value for that and understand, okay, this is my sub contributing for the specific measure. So I can get into uh, more detail about this measurement. If I just double click here, this opens the histogram window for this measurement, which again, I can go through all, all the information that I uh, went through earlier in, in even more detail format. So from here, if I zoom into the measurement that is measuring in the graphic, I have a show min and show max button. So just by clicking this, it just builds the model to its minimum position and also to its maximum position. So that's a simple button click where you can understand what is the min and max position for this specific measure. Similarly, you can go through this on each and every measurement to understand how the model builds and what is the closest in the farthest position for each and every measure. And speaking of which, if I continue to the contributor list, I know these are the set of contributors. Now I feel like this, this one here, I'm just taking this for an example. This is a position on a top cover. If I want to know what is the position contributing visually for this whole model, I have an option called um, visualize effect. So just by clicking this measure, right click, and select visualize effect, this will open a small dialog for me. So from here, now if I hit continuous, so this is actually deviating the model only for that specific contributor. That's the position on the top curve. So you can see how the variation or the deviation is very minimum now when compared to the previous deviation I did when applying the whole model variation. So now let me stop here, and if I want to get into even more detail about this specific GDNP or tolerance. So if I click this drop down, this gives you the list of the features that being used for this specific GDNP. So now I say, for example, I want to know the, the variation of just the left cover two-way point and to see how uh, the GDNT applied on this specific feature of, of affecting my whole model. So just by selecting that, and if I hit continuous, you can see how the just the left cover deviates and there's no other deviation. So this is to know what this variation only for this feature. Similarly, let me stop and try another feature here. So I'm gonna use the right cover two way and hit continuous again. You can see how the right cover alone deviates. So this is one way of getting into a very detailing uh, information for each and every measure and getting down to its contributor to know understand how the how this affects the whole model. These are the defaulted uh, statistics that is displayed or how the previous user uh, selected from the view options. So uh, say for example, if you want to know even more information or even more values or statistic information from this model, you can do that by getting into file options. This will open an analysis options dialog where you can turn on and off multiple options to see to get this other information as well so, so from here uh, under Monte Carlo say for example I want to know the PPPPK value uh, also min and max and say okay so this instantly updates the statistic here so now I get to know the min max and PPPPK value for the existing measure so I didn't have to run again or done through the simulation this just adds up the information that that I wanted to view so similarly, you can do that for the contributors and all other uh, statistics we have.